I am integrating mm -hmm. and I'm saying, what does my voice sound like? If there was a superpower, we had a CEO retreat and we were talking about superpowers that we wished for when we were kids. And I asked the table, what's one that you want now as an adult? And mine was the superpower of deciphering, is this my voice or is this someone else's voice? Is this the ego, which to me means society, significant other, parents, uh, coaches, peers, like whose voice is this? That would be the superpower. And so since then I've been practicing that muscle and I realized what helps is to remove the outside voices. I'll say I wouldn't have gotten to this point without all the coaches and the investments I'd made. I wouldn't have as many lessons to integrate. And so I wanna honor and thank every single coach, mastermind, investment, they got me to this point. And I thank all of them. And I think the previous version of Danny who made those investments and now I get to embody all of that and ask myself, okay, whose voice is this and what do I want? Welcome back to Since 3000. I'm Danielle Leslie and I am so honored to be sharing the sofa today with Jessica Hurley. You are gonna meet her in just a second. Jessica, producer extraordinaire. She has produced the most amazing podcast for the most amazing people and I am so excited to talk to you today. Can we do a cheers? Woo, Thank cheers. you for coming. Cheers to you. Yeah. Cheers to Sense 3000. Absolutely. Cheers to all your success, everything that you've accomplished and everything that we've got to witness. Thank you. Cheers to you being you and giving us all permission to be ourselves and for that to be our brand. Oh. I really appreciate that. Personally, I appreciate that and I know your audience appreciates that. Thank you. So cheers to you. Oh. Cheers. Today's interview is about you. I'm interviewing Danielle Leslie. What? I want to talk about your success, your story. And so I'm switching. So switch. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so excited to bring you today's episode, but before we do, I need to make sure you've heard about Member Up. So community-driven products are the future, but Facebook groups are a thing of the past. And after 10 plus years in the online education space, I've taken all my learnings and I've built this incredible platform, Member Up. It's a customizable, easy to use, all-in-one platform where you can build a premium course, community, or membership site without the tech headache. Gone are the days of having to duct tape together your content, your community, your payments, all on different platforms. I want you to do me a favor, do yourself a favor and head over right now to memberup.com forward slash Danielle and you can get started for free today. I promise you, I, ooh, I can't wait for you to see this platform. It's beautiful, okay? The design is amazing. Your community is gonna feel at home here and you are gonna take pride in your online business. It is the place to start. Head over to memberup.com forward slash Danielle. Now let's get into the episode. So I have to start here because this is like a dream for me. And this is my full circle moment of starting a show four and a half years ago, my own podcast show with the intention of interviewing entrepreneurs because I had two failed attempts as an entrepreneur. And when I finally was ready to give it all up, I was like, you know what? I just wanna start a show where I interview incredible entrepreneurs and ask them, I get their accolades, I already know, cause I, I chase them, I follow them, I love it. But I wanna ask them about the moments they felt the most stuck. I wanna know about the moment that they were crying in the car. I wanna know about the moment where they were on their knees, they thought they could not continue, and I want them to explain how they got through it because those moments seem inevitable and someone that had failed multiple times, I was like, how y'all doing this? Cause I don't understand. And you were the first course, you were the first digital course I ever watched. And I was like, this woman is incredible. Oh my God. So to be sitting on the couch with you, oh! I'm having my full circle yes. moment of like interviewing the ultimate entrepreneur, oh. the everyone's measuring stick for success, so many women, and I'm interviewing you. So thank you for Thank this. you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Oh my, God. it's been amazing to work with you. Thank you. Like, so this, this is amazing. So normally you're behind the camera yes. and you're helping guide. And so I love that like, I'm just like, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be magic. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Oh, yes. There might be, you know, there might be a little nerves because this is like a big, oh, this is a big full circle moment for me. Because my favorite thing behind the camera is to pretend to be the audience. I'm like, if someone is listening, because I am the ultimate podcast listener, I love it. I love the art. It's an art form to me. So to sit behind the camera and hear all of it and think, what is the audience thinking? How are they perceiving this? How are they receiving this? And to now sit in this chair with you is fun. Oh. So 
We jumping in. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> deep end. 11 feet? 11. Is that where we at? I don't know. I like it when it's like so feet? deep, my feet can't oh, touch the bottom. So feet. let's go 3,000 feet. So one of my favorite things about you is that you are... Like, people don't understand the level of freedom in which you operate. Like, you are playful, you are free-spirited, you live life. To me, and I say this in all the ways you want to see it, you're, like, drunk off life. Oh! <laughs> you be living. You hear me? Like, you be living. <laughs> you be living. <laughs> and it is my favorite. And I remember reading this one-liner in a book, and it made me think of you instantly. It was like, the more healed people are, the more playful they are. Wow. And so I was like, man, that is a high tail sign of the work that Danielle has done is because then you stop judging yourself. Like, really, it's ultimately that you stop judging yourself. Yes. And so I, when I see you in the way you move, like there's even times where you've called me to do things like dance in public and do that. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 like, I'm not ready for that. And it's where I see that ultimately you have completely stopped judging yourself, which means not, you know, not completely. We always have our moments, but that you've stopped judging yourself. You've done the work because you are so playful to the point where you allow it to inspire you. And so they also say it's darkest before the light. Mm. So in order for you to have gotten to that place of doing the work, and we'll talk about that, you've done so much work. What was that dark night of the soul moment? What was that moment where you were like, life was good until now? It's like a before and after. It's an unforgiving moment of ourselves. Like life was one way, th in this moment and then after this moment, I decided to change. What was that moment that sparked your healing journey? Oh, that's good. It's interesting. So I have one moment that comes to mind. And by the way, I love how you articulated that because I would say my biggest Achilles heel has been the self-judgment. I think only until recently I had the language around it. And then the first iteration of that language was, I'm afraid of what others will think until it was actually my therapist who said, are you afraid of what others will think or afraid of what you think about yourself? And I was like, ooh, you're right, okay. So you articulated it so well. Um, that has been my Achilles heel. And it, I do feel like freer and like I am building that muscle to just be, girl, just be. You be being. Um, like so it was really like a series of moments um, that were dark for me. One moment that comes to mind is, so I was on this path, I was in a relationship, I had the whole thing. We knew what we were doing. We knew what we were, where we were going. Uh, the business was going, knew where that was going. Had pretty much everything, quote unquote, figured out. And then that relationship ended and it was like a shakeup. And it was like, and the universe was like, uh-uh, like, oh, you thought you knew? Oh, you about to, you gonna learn today. And it was like, oh, we're gonna put you into this practice of asking, who am I, who am I, who am I? So I remember one evening and I was, I was actually doing a, a trip. And I love going on journeys because it is, what it does is it reaches things that are there and they are beneath the surface mm -hmm. and they are influencing every decision we make, how we show up, how we hold back. It's in some of these journeys and there was this one in particular where I, I mean, I saw it and I felt it. I felt everything that I had been like, you know, pretending wasn't there. And so I remember the resounding story was you hit your ceiling, you hit your ceiling, you hit your ceiling. So I would say that was probably my darkest moment because my whole life was one of infinite possibilities. I mean, I was an overachiever. I was like, we could do anything. We could create anything with our word, with our thoughts, with our spirit. And in that moment, I no longer saw a future that I could create. I saw I had already hit my ceiling. I thought it was the end. I was like, nope, we already did the most we gonna do. Like we're done. And I remember what I saw one of the visions I saw in that journey was the multiple levels of judgment. So it was so clear to me, I had a visual of me judging myself. And then I was like, wait, but why are you judging yourself? So then I was judging myself for judging myself. And then I was judging myself for judging myself for judging myself. I saw four layers of judgment, like visually in front of me and I felt it. And I was like, oh, so that's what we've been facing. Okay, got it. And then I saw the ceiling and I'm, I'm sitting upstairs in my office and my, the way my desk was set up at that time, it, it was like a spaceship. And it was like, all right, we're commanding the universe. And that's the vibe I had when I first moved in and when I first sat at that seat. But fast forward to these months later and I was like, no, 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 this physical ceiling right here, I already hit it, it's done. Like there's, there's nothing else to do. And in that same moment, I saw 
first the layers of my judgment. And then I remember like crying profusely and seeing a visual of this excavation site where I saw the like six layers going deep. And I saw, and I, for that moment, I said, oh my goodness. And I was crying and I was like, these are not my tears. These are the tears of my ancestors. And I think I realized two things. One was I am here to be able to express everything that they lived, that they went through. And I'm a vessel in this moment. Mm -hmm. And it was a great moment of detaching from the tears and the emotion I was feeling. And it was so freeing because I said, okay, I'm here for you. I'm expressing this for you. And it was that, that commingling of, of that moment. And then the moment where I'm like, okay, they are trying to free you. They're saying, yo, girl, like you're the vessel. You get to express without being attached to this. But then there was the moment before when I was feeling chained to my judgment and feeling like I had already done everything. I can't create anything else. That was the moment for me when I was like, I don't know what I'm doing with my business next. I don't know, you know, am I going to find someone else to be with in this lifetime? What does my future look like? Whew. Thank you for sharing that. So what I heard was you had to unbecome so you could recreate. Like you had to meet yourself where you were. Like, okay, this is what I think about myself. I recall someone saying that um, there's a lot of CEOs. I don't remember what I was listening to, but there were uh, all these CEOs that had executive coaches, high-level CEOs that had executive coaches. And the executive coaches said that the scariest place for these high-level CEOs is when they're at the peak of their success. Because when they're at the peak of their success, they are immediately following it with, this will come to an end eventually. Because I've gotten to my highest vision. I've gotten to my highest place. So that means there's only down from here. And so knowing that you're at the top and you're about to start rolling down is a scary place to be. And so it's kind of unbecoming so you can recreate a new vision. Because you don't have to go down. You can just elevate to a new or a different place. Yes. So after that, what were some of the things that you did to like kind of begin that journey because I think who you're referencing in that moment to who you've become is a very freer, yeah. amazing, spiritual, uh, lively, playful, uh, still incredibly intelligent, powerful CIO. For you to become the, the CIO, the free version of yourself, the spiritual version of yourself, the person that you've truly embodied, which eventually led to Sensory 3000, I first wanna talk about like the, the tangible work that you did, like maybe the most powerful books you read, some of the actual spiritual experiences you had, or were some of the things that you were like, that literally was where I pivoted and was like, okay. Yes, oh my gosh. So the first thing that came to mind was uh, changing and then removing my measuring stick. So that was a huge first mindset shift that I needed to embody to then be open to the tools that were calling me. And what that meant was my whole life I had that measuring stick, which was first get straight A's. Then it was be president of every organization. So I was prom queen, ASB president, ICC president, so the president of all the presidents at all the high schools. <laughs> like talk about achievement to the highest level. Like I was like, oh, we're doing it all. all it. And so I had a measuring stick my whole life. So when I entered into entrepreneurship and I said, okay, well, what's the measuring Same stick way. with the course business? It's the revenue. So that's when every moment, the North Star, the measuring stick was revenue. It was, okay, when can we hit the million? Okay, now we need to hit 10 million. And I remember being like you know getting calls for articles like oh we want to write and I'm like no 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 press like a mil no a million is nothing we need to do 10 million then I'll be ready for the press so it kept moving the measuring stick kept growing and so what I had to do first was change the measuring stick so mm -hmm. first I changed it from the revenue to number of hours I was working per week so it changed to actually living and life and so what I did is I focused on how can I, instead of working the 50 hour weeks, and it's wild because at this time, the company was doing really well. I had a whole official team in place, yet I was still doing all the things. I was stuck mm. in the DIYing. I felt like I had to touch everything because I was afraid of the judgment of myself. And I'm like, I still gotta write the email. I still gotta, I still gotta look, approve everything. And so therefore I had the amazing capable team there, but I still was working the 50, 60 hour weeks. So I said, okay, the next measuring stick is let's get this down to 10 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Once I focused on that, got it done in two and a half months. So now we're like, oh, oh, okay. We got this, cool. So the final shift was realizing, like, we don't need no measuring stick at all. And I was like, bloop, doo -doo, out of here. Okay, doo -doo, out of here. And what became- Success is what I wanted to be. <laughs> what became my new North Star was, am I feeling fully self-expressed from moment to moment? When you think about that as a quote unquote measurement or a North Star, that is truly infinite. 
And that truly has no judgment. It's about how do I feel? Do I feel fully self-expressed? So that became my new guiding light. After my relationship, one book that was great, um, my really good friend Tara Reed recommended it, and it was called Love, Freedom, and Aloneness. Mm. So first it was me learning that there's a difference between feeling lonely and embracing aloneness. And one of my biggest stories growing up was I don't have any friends. I feel so alone. And I realized that I was carrying a story that belonged to my mom. And because I remember telling my spiritual advisor this, Rosemary, and she said, wait, 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 you, what do you mean you don't have any friends? She's like, didn't you tell me you were just in LA visiting Crystal, your best friend? Did, did you just get off the phone with Tara? Didn't you just tell me that this weekend you're doing these things? And I was like, uh, she's like, where is the no friends thing? And I was like, oh, uh, okay, well, what the? And she's like, so where is this coming from? And I realized I had done a truth session. So this was another resource, um, Lalita Ballesteros. She's amazing. Mm. She has these truth sessions and it's a two hour, three hour session with just you and her. And I had done one. And what she does is she speaks to you, asks you questions for that time. And at the end, she reintroduces you to yourself. So she says, what stage would you love to speak on? And at that point, it was the TED stage. I was like, your girl is on the TED stage. And she said, okay, I'm going to reintroduce you as who I see you as right now. Mm -hmm. And a part of that was my book that she had envisioned. And she said, the name of your book is I See You and You Belong. And I was like, ooh. And then I gifted my mom a true session. And because she loves learning, she this is where I get, she loves learning and she's like, okay, and she's, she's about the shits. So I was like, okay, mommy, here you go. She did a truth session. I hadn't shared what happened in mine. She did hers and she told me, she's like, oh, Danny, it was amazing. And yeah, she told me, you know, the name of my book um, and, and the book is going to be called uh, Belonging. And I said, wait, wait, wait. And I shared this with Rosemary. Rosemary said, wait a minute, your book is a message and in response to your mom. You are telling your mom, I see you, you belong. All this time, you have been carrying your mom's story of not belonging. You know, grew up in Panama, went to American school, never quite felt like she fit in, always talking about, I don't have any friends, I don't know where I fit in. And I took that on and I really believe that was my story too. As soon as Rosemary said, you, you are here as a gift to tell your mom, I see you and you belong. That is a gift. As soon as she told me that, I literally felt lighter. So my story of feeling lonely my whole life, I got no friends, listening to that book, Love, Freedom, and Aloneness, and learning the distinction between loneliness and aloneness, I learned that aloneness is beautiful. Aloneness is making friends with yourself. Like the best friend, the biggest love of your life is yourself. And I hadn't realized that. And that started me in realizing, oh, okay, I can surround myself by beautiful things that inspire me. You know, this painting, the tulips, people like you, people like Helen. Hey, shout out to Helen. Right? <laughs> and, and it really taught me that, you know, the joy is within and I have the opportunity to be my own friend. And I started relishing in that aloneness and started asking, okay, what makes me happy? And then I started this practice of being in the pursuit of pleasure. So another book that was great is Pussy, A Reclamation by Mama Jaina, uh, and she has a second book, and I read the second book during that time, but it talks about just our, our gift as women and our divine feminine, how we can show up and just flirt with life. You know, as my friend Grace says, and she's on one of these episodes, you know, life is romantic. And so it shows you can flirt with life, you know, go get a coffee and just just flirt with, you know, the person and just be like, hey, how are you? And nothing attached to it all. It's just you being in your being and flowing. And so I really embodied that. OK, how can I flirt with life? How can I dance? I remember being on a call with you one time and I think we were talking about relationships. We were in our content strategy sessions yes. and we were talking about Those relationships. Those were the best, by the way. <laughs> So fine. <laughs> and we were talking about relationships and you said, I think I said something about when a man asks a certain question and the face you gave me when you were like, oh no, I, I'm the muse. Like I'm the man's muse. Like I'm the muse in every room that I walk in, including any man that I choose to like share my life with. And like, oh, I've been doing this all wrong. <laughs> like, I was like, but, but you have truly like created that in your life. I've watched you constantly choose your magic within, like live in flow, live inspired, like 
you talk about always being fully expressed and I don't know anybody that practices that better than you. Like I so enjoy watching it and I think it's coming to life, literally coming to life, you as the executive producer through your Sensory Thousand brand. And for so many people watching, and this is coming from a, a fan, a follower, where from this healing journey, how did you go, okay, not only do I wanna live life fully expressed, but I feel like your next level execution of it is through your Sensory Thousand brand. And so how did you go from Course From Scratch, the story you were telling yourself around Course From Scratch, and this brand new brand fully embodying your past, present, and future self? It's interesting because I think what we'll find is with Since 3000, it is all about embodying your past, present, and future self now. And one thing I realized is we often end up returning back to ourselves. And so this brand has always been inside of me. Everything I've done has been a reflection of this. I just didn't have the language or the, the consciousness of it. And so it was a natural next thing. What helped is the proximity piece. You know, I was being, you know, newly single. I had more space to surround myself with more friends, um, new people who are also futurist visionaries. And so the first piece was putting myself in proximity with other like futurists and visionaries. And I was like, oh wait, what's this whole Web3 NFT? Okay, interesting. Oh, what's this whole spiritual? Okay, interesting. So that was the first thing was really like calling in and being open to and being moved by and putting myself in proximity with, with folks like that who already saw the future and were living it. And then it was going to events like conferences, continuing to learn. Um, it was going on the unplanned last minute trips where I got to like express myself and, and dream through these ideas. And so with Since 3000, you know, it started as an NFT project and it started with this vision of how can we create the first collection that really reflects who we are because I don't see a, a collection that looks like me right. and that has the essence and has like the fashion overlap and like the physical and the digital, the digital fashion. Because your fashion is on point. Hey. If you don't tell those people to get out of my DMs, oh. they're like, where are the BTS footage of her shoes and her jewelry and like all the things. So you're a vibe. Continue. Shout out to Germany, my <laughs> collaborator. Shout out to Stylist Germany. of the century. So it started there and then it moved into, all right, I want to do a show. I thought about... I was seeing this shift where I was feeling resistance to being the quote unquote expert in the room and being the teacher all the time. This identity of I'm the teacher, I'm the expert. So creating a course, creating a course from scratch, um, you know, I am the teacher, I'm the expert. I go on my Q and A's, I am the expert. They are asking me all the questions. I am there to, to get to, to deliver, to give the answers. On my team, I was the CIO, I was the leader, the CEO at that time before I rebranded it in a way that inspired me. And they were coming to me for the answers. Um, and, and I felt, you know, I created this narrative that I had to give them all the answers. So it was me going to uh, hosting masterminds and being the expert, the one that everyone's asking questions. So I saw, I wanted to be a student again. I'm like, mm. I love being a student. And I thought back to the original, uh, you know, business project I created, which was called the Do Love Project. And this was a decade ago. It was in like 2000 and. Uh, 12 when I was living with my mom and I was dreaming up what I want to do and it was one of my first projects was called um, do love therapy sessions so I wanted to create an online course and I said okay I want to but I want to talk to the people and I want to be a student of what their biggest fear is in doing what they love for a living um, and so I remember just interviewing people and I just loved interviewing people and then I did a podcast with my best friend Crystal uh, brand new nation and this was a decade ago. I was like, girl, you know, if we would have kept doing that thing, we would have been sore. I know we should have kept going. But it's oh, okay. the people that started but, 10 years ago, locked in. Right? Locked oh, in. But it was so much fun. Like, we got to be students. Like, we would say, who do we find interesting and fascinating? Let's bring them on the show. So we had Zim on there. We got to ask her about travel hacking and how she's creating this cool life for herself. We had Ariel on there who had just gotten cast on a reality show, but really made it her own and was like breaking down all the barriers. Like, we had so many amazing people on there we got to ask them Jabari how are you doing these R&B colors parties how is event businesses an actual business how much are you making how much are you taking home how are you I got to be a student and so with this this show I was like wait 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 I'm going back to where I started which is what I 
freaking love, I love being a student. I love sitting on the couch and being like, so tell me, how did you do this? And then I love taking what they share and, you know, digesting it and synthesizing it into a framework, a fun ass acronym that, you know, really vibes and resonates so that others can do it too and helping create the blueprint. So what I started creating with Do Love Project was um, these press playbooks. So the first like version of my course was called Press Play. And when I did it, it was so funny because I'm like, girl, you're supposed to be creating your first course. In the course of creating my first course, <laughs> I end up doing these webinars where I would host other people and I would have other people on and I would interview them. And I was supposed to be selling my course, but this was a decade ago. There was no course on webinar. Like I didn't know what I was doing. So I ended up turning my supposed like, like sales webinar into an interview and I would just get deep into their stories. And I was like, you know what I can do? I can do these press playbooks. And so I had like Arel Moody on and he's like this like, world-renowned speaker and I was like oh I could do a press playbook with a with a realm and interview him turn it into a framework and we could collaborate on this playbook that others can use to become speakers so when I started I really like yes I was creating and I created my first course press play but at the same time like what brought me so much joy was also interviewing others and helping them create playbooks tell their stories so that was a big shift for me was saying I want to be the student again. I want to have this show. I want to play dress up and talk to my friends. Which is literally what you've been doing. Yes. <laughs> and it's so, so fun. fun. So fun. <laughs> I have to highlight what you just said because I think in the industry that we're all, you know, so many of us are in, which is this uh, influencer guru, it is this fight to the top. Like you always talk about your North Star being at first it was revenue. I think people, when they start making a significant amount of money and a significant amount of impact, for you to say that you wanted to become a student again, I think is so important to highlight the purpose behind that because to me, and when you really get down a lot of these books we read, right, when you go on this journey, they talk so much about the intent, and Gamal, your guest, talked about this as well, of building wealth, building something, whether you love it or not, killing it, crushing it, making enough money either exiting or making enough money to invest it in something else. And then that now gives you the, because so many people that are in survival don't have the time or the space to actually focus on like, what is it that I want? The book wanting, right? And you put yourself in a position where you could take some time off and go, okay, I did all the things. I'm evolving. I can feel my identity shifting and I want to be a student again because maybe I don't know what that next thing is, but I can feel myself no longer identifying with, of course, from scratch, Danielle, no longer this high achiever, perfectionist, and you still are incredibly talented and you kill it every time, but saying, okay, I wanna be more fully expressed. I wanna be more free. And what is this gonna look like for me? And then being a student of it and being a student of yourself. I think there's so much ego out there and people just don't stop long enough to go, okay, what's next? And let me sit in that. Mm -hmm. And so my question for you is, there was a process that came with that and Gamal talked about this, was there ever a time in being a student again where your ego got in the way, where you were like, I'm not achieving enough right now. I'm not doing enough. I'm not being seen enough. I'm not, where you had to kind of check, self-check, self-audit. Mm. I think one very recent moment is when I was thinking about this show mm. and I found myself getting into the same pattern of if this, then that. So when we have the show and my Strengths Finder, have you done Strengths Finder, Clifton no. Strength? Oh, so good. So when I did Strengths Finder, my top ones, my number one was Futurist. You oh. literally live there. <laughs> That's where you live. That was my number one. And so that means I'm motivated by what could be by the future. Uh, the second one was Activator. So that is when you can make a roadmap that goes from point A to point B. And then the third one was Maximizer. And that's when you think about how do we maximize every situation? So that's amazing. And also what I found is it became limiting for my self-expression. It became limiting for that question of who am I and what does fully self-expressed me look like? So when creating the show, my mind automatically went to what comes after? What's the opt-in? What's the call to action? What's happening? Like, where are we sending people so we can maximize the opportunity? And I, was and I was about to build a whole new, I was like, oh, we're building a whole new platform. It's going to be this. Yes. It's going to cost this. He, I had the timeline, the spreadsheet. Here's what we're about to do, monthly recurring revenue. And I talked to my business manager, and he said, I want to have you try something on because he's very spiritual as well, which is really dope. And we can go months without talking. 
and he will say what I have been feeling. And I'm like, ooh. So he said, you know, where I see that where you are right now is that it is is dark. And you've talked about this. You've said like, whoo, it's, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's there. And he said, it's dark for a reason. Like before any of this was created, it was dark. It's calling you to create what's next. You're not gonna create in the light. It needs to be dark because it's waiting for you to build. And he said, you, when you think about early civilization, you know, the East Coast was developed. You had New Jersey, you had New York, those colonies were developed. There was nothing out West. Mm -hmm. There was nothing out there. Like you needed to go and build it. He said, I find you going back to the East Coast, to those early colonies, because that's where you feel grounded. That's where you feel safe. You think I've got to create this another business. Like this is what I need to do. And he said, I want to invite you. I want you to know that you don't live on this earth. You're not supposed to be a part of the colonies. You're not supposed to be in the house. You want another planet. You're supposed to go out West. It's supposed to be dark where you are because you're here to create, bring the light and create what's next. And he said, so what if with this show, you see where it goes. If you have a quote unquote Imagine plan that. for it and you have, okay, step one is this and then it's going in this. How are you allowing what's really like beyond your comprehension be. gonna happen? How are you allowing The Rock to see you? Dwayne Johnson, he's amazing. How are you allowing him to see your show and be like, I wanna partner with her? If you already have it figured out when you're sending people over here and so everything you're doing is narrow-minded because like we got to structure the show in a way that takes people here we got to say this because they need to go here uh the rock ain't gonna be messing with that he gonna be like oh, okay cool no 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 or i want to be a guest on her show because it looks so much fun Ooh, okay like, because, because the fully expressed danielle is me. fun wow she's a party starter she's literally oh. a blast and so for them to watch and be like, that looks like so much fun. And she looks so different. And I want to be a part of that. The optimizing, maximizing perfectionist Danielle would not have. And I saw you go back and forth in that process. You were there for that. Yeah, I was there. I was there because I remember the text message. And I was like, <laughs> we got off a call. And it was when you hit me with the curveball. And you were like. Plot twist. Plot twist. Uh, going back to everything that we said we weren't doing. And I was like, wait. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna go with the flow. And then you found it on your own. I almost said something and I was so happy. And then I was like, nope, I'm gonna. And then one day you text me and you said, am I overthinking this? Am I, I'm thinking that I have to maximize and sell this and make it the best thing and the most possible, the best opportunity for my audience and all the things, am I overthinking this? And I was like, yes. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't gonna say it, but yes. <laughs> The version of you that I see now in this space is you're doing exactly your strength finder. You're doing exactly what you're called to do. Um, and where this is going, we don't know. And I always say, God gives us like slight previews or, or uh, visions that only are meant for us. And it's literally for us to just obey or commit to because his vision is so much bigger than anything we can conceptualize. Mm -hmm. We are narrow minded in the fact that we cannot conceptualize what he can conceptualize for us. So sometimes it's just here's a little snippet, which was probably your original podcast idea, which is I just want to have fun with my friends. I want to go back to remembering yes. all the fun I had in these interviews. Yes. And then you got caught up in what's made Danielle successful, your original story. Who made Danielle Leslie? You did, but how? And what What all of the things that work for me, optimizing and maximizing every opportunity. Mm. And so you went back to that. And then I was like, but what I see in this for you and what you know, like your business manager said, was you're going to lay the foundation. You're going to lay the future for what's next for so many people through this show. You're going to be like, this is where we're going. Women are now investing in NFTs. Everyone can have their, like, you're literally laying the foundation for what's next. Mm -hmm. The first time I came here and met you and heard you talk about all this stuff, I was like, I had my moment that you had of a new ceiling. I was like, oh, the ceiling is new. Like the ceiling has lifted because hearing you talk in your, where you live, which is 3000, I was like, oh, new ceiling, new place. Like I have had it all wrong. Take it to the next level. What ceiling? I mean, what we ceiling? have never even heard of a ceiling. Correct. Like, what is that? You, you have none. Like you're past the moon and beyond <laughs> the stars. That's where you live. But hearing you in that space was what helped me elevate. And so I was like, I've been, I've been known stay the course, Danielle Leslie. Like I, you're taking me to the next level. And so you operating in that space has been, um, I've watched you resist the journey and then embrace Ooh. it. And the more I see you in here, the more I'm like, oh, there's something so big coming. It's so massive. Oh. It's, it's your bigger big. Yes. 
it's been proven that procrastination can be one of our biggest enemies to success. Now, contrary to belief, procrastination is not based on a lack of time management or organizational skills. Procrastination is directly linked to our emotions. Now, the reason I know this is because of Patty Johnston. Patty Johnston is incredible. She's a course from scratch member, but even more importantly, she's built multiple multi-million dollar businesses once she learned how to overcome procrastination. So she's created a program where she shares her system on how to overcome procrastination, and it's based on emotional intelligence, neuroscience, and accountability. She's gonna show you step-by-step -step how to overcome negative feelings so you can start taking action and start seeing a difference from day one. So text this number right now to schedule an appointment with Patty and her team to see if this is right for you and what steps for you to take to overcome your procrastination. 813-789-1097. And again, the number to text right now is 813-789-1097. Let's all overcome procrastination together. Now let's get back to the episode. So this one is for your audience um, because, oh, let me be selfish. This is for me. And then if this <laughs> resonates with you, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> I love it. This is for me. So three and a half years in entrepreneurship, like I'm literally a toddler, right? I think about a child, like walking, can function, fully self-function? No, not really. Like needs some assistant, needs help, and needs to constantly be empowered and motivated, right? So three and a half years in entrepreneurship. And there are days where I'm Beyonce. Like you can't tell me oh, shit. Yes. Money's coming in. Mm -hmm. I am in the like dancing in the car, t give me all the sales calls, watch me work, baby. Yes. And, then, and you get this vibe of like, this is the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, this, oh yeah. The way I feel I right now. Oh, yeah. Me I'm for the rest like of my life. Yeah, I'm going to feel like this forever. Nothing could, you're literally invincible. Nothing could stop me. Yes. Just kidding. <laughs> um, and then, and then, y'all know this one. Then you find yourself crying, packing a bag because you think tomorrow you're going to have to go live under a bridge. Because oh, now yes. nothing makes sense. <laughs> yes. I remember being at, a, at Ask Live with Ryan Levesque, and he was like, why do entrepreneurs always think when we have a bad month that we're immediately going to have to go live under a bridge? Oh, yes. I was like, oh, that's absolutely the case. So you're packing your bag, and you're like, my journey's over. I, this was not meant for me. I, I was not created for this. I have failed miserably, and I have to go tell my mom and all the people that doubted me right. that they were right. So yes. let me prepare my uh, death of the ego over here story, my letter, right? Yes. We talked about your dark night of the soul, which was personal, but for your business, did you ever have the I'm gonna pack my bag moment? Like, I can't pay my, and I'm talking about deep, like, cause we said dark night of the soul is usually a breakup or like it's a re re renowned identity moment. For business, it's like, I can't pay my staff. Or um, I thought that investing $100,000 in that was gonna work and it did not. So I'm not as smart as I thought. Like oh, yeah. what was this uh, cry in the car moment for your business for you? Oh, wow. So I'm big on investing in coaching and mentors. I remember my friend Anna from Homemade Cooking. Shout out to Anna. She's amazing. Um, and she would joke with me and be like, yo, I'd be joking with my husband. Like, I've never met anyone who spends so much on herself. And when I say herself, it's not on the shoes of the person. It's on a coach. It's on a program. It's on you a, can have a my learning money. situation. You can have my money. Exactly. You can have my money. <laughs> okay. Like, I think at my height, at one time, I was talking to my therapist every Monday. I was talking to my business manager every Wednesday, my spiritual advisor every Thursday, my business coach every Friday. Was I mean, this the fear of losing the money that you had made? Not at that point. Okay. When I first started working with like two coaches, yes. When I did my first six-figure month, mm. yes. So when I did my first six-figure month, absolutely. My motivation was, oh, I don't want to screw this up. Yep. Like, I've never had this much money. What am I doing? So yes, at that time, the motivation was, let me find people who have been there before. Let me find the visionaries. They've already walked the walk, let me partner with them. And at this time at the height, I actually did it from a place of, the, this is what I do to level up. Like I'm always, I guess, uh, one of the things I'm motivated by is the learning, it is the like coll collapsing time. How can I get there in a fraction of the time? And what really took me out was when I made a major investment in a coach and then, um, worked with another team and made a major investment plus was offering rev share to this team. And after working with them, I was like, oh, this ain't it. And then I'm like, wait, oh, this is not getting better. Oh, wait, this is really not getting better. And me realizing that I guess I had just worked on certain skills, but not, there was this skill of like listening to myself 
and knowing my voice is the most important voice to listen to. Mm -hmm. And in seeking the learning and how do I collapse time, I had adopted a philosophy that what that looks like is working with coaches and working with mentors and giving them all my money and giving them this and giving them that. And so I didn't have as much liquidity as before. You know, the margins were different because I was putting it over here in this bucket instead of if I had just paused and said, you know, let's let's just take a little break. And I liken it to my journey with uh, medicine. I've gone on like a few journeys and last year was a, my year of journeying. And then this year I said, this is my year of integration. So all the learnings I got from working with the medicine, doing the journeys this year, I'm going to integrate those lessons and I'm going to listen to this voice that they helped cultivate, they helped curate, but also it's my voice. It's the highest voice. I'm going to listen to that of God, of universe, of me, the highest voice. I'm going to listen to that and I'm going to go and I'm going to be great and I'm going to integrate all the lessons. So same thing with these coaches. I said, okay, we're going to pump the brakes. So right now is the first time in my whole, like, probably like adult life, I don't know how long, I guess maybe, yeah, since starting my business, since I work with those first coaches where I'm not working with anyone. Mm. So I paused my therapist. So it's been a couple years. I'm not working with my therapist, not working with spiritual advisor, you know, not any business coaches, not partnering with anyone, not paying anyone for masterminds. Like I am integrating mm. and I'm saying, what does my voice sound like? If there was a superpower, we had a CEO retreat and we were talking about superpowers that we wished for when we were kids. And I asked the table, what's one that you want now as an adult? And mine was the superpower of deciphering, is this my voice or is this someone else's voice? Is this the ego, which to me means society, significant other, parents, uh, coaches, peers, like whose voice is this? That would be the superpower. And so since then I've been practicing that muscle and I realized what helps is to remove the outside voices. I'll say I wouldn't have gotten to this point without all the coaches and the investments I'd made, right? I wouldn't have as many lessons to integrate. And so I wanna honor and thank every single coach, mastermind, investment, like, they got me to this point. And I thank all of them. And I think the previous version of Danny who made those investments. And now I get to embody all of that and ask myself, okay, whose voice is this and what do I want? I hope y'all heard that loud and clear. There's such a message out there that is like, don't hire a coach that doesn't have a coach. And don't, um, you know, you should constantly be learning and you should constantly be paying someone. But if there's anything I've learned, more so on my healing journey, is there is a season and you're using the word integration, which I love, but you will slap yourself in the face every single time when you are in your darkest moments or having a like lapse. I feel like I always say like you're, you're only as healed as your next best trigger. And so you will be in a triggered mm. moment and be like, wait, it is, it is astounding when you realize like, wait, I feel like I can't get out of this, but I can because I've learned the tools. I've actually, in fact, heard that several times, but I never stopped long enough to integrate or to apply the lessons. So we're consume, 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 consume culture, but we don't actually practice anything that we learn. And they're the only way to do that. You talked about it earlier, alone or being uh, practicing aloneness and integrating saying, okay, like, how are you gonna go learn all these tools, physical and or mental, and for your business and for your like breath work, you know, for me, the breath work, and like, then for me to have a moment and be like, wait, I'm not doing breath work anymore, so no wonder I can't self-regulate self through this moment because I'm not practicing any of the things that I learned. Mm. And so the practice of simply integrating and getting really quiet, because we're always trying to fast forward through, uh, fast forward to the success, and then I'll practice those things. Because I always talk about how like success can't silence the noise. So oh. you have got to. People try to like fast forward the success, and then I'll implement the things. Because I just need to be at a place where I can stand still. Well, that will not come. So you have to create it. And so for you to have a season of integration, I hope y'all heard that clearly, because that is so powerful. Of like, you need a season of silence. You need a season, season of silence. I love that, the season of silence, because, well, there are a couple distinctions that I think will help, like help me in my journey. And it's 
asking what I need most now in this season. And so it may be a season where there is a new skill you want to learn, and therefore you buy that program to learn that skill. Yes. You mentioned breath work, and this would set it off for me. I was like, yes, Wim Hof, come to me. Yes, yes breath, work, breath work course. Because I'm like, I don't know how to do no breath work. Like, yes. So that is a skill in which I would invest in a program, and I would yeah, learn right. that. And then there is the other type where it is the coaching where you are entrusting and hoping that this person is asking you the open-ended questions that allow you to go inside of you yourself as opposed to projecting onto you what their version and definition of success is. Oh, a CEO is not supposed to do anything. A CEO is supposed to outsource everything. You're supposed to be out, you're supposed to do. And it's like, okay, maybe some of these things, but not all of them. And you get lost in doing that. So I think definitely making that distinction of, okay, what do I need most now? investing in that, the season of, of silence, what that made me think of is even a day-to-day -day practice of the silence. So that would be you know, what Deepak Chopra calls the gap. It's yep. like Dr. Joe calls the space in between, but it's the meditation. It's the even, you know, if you're just um, sitting, listening to music, what messages are coming through. But yeah, that has been so, so big for me, mm -hmm. creating that like on a, on a micro level and a macro level. Your journey is my favorite. And the way your brain works is my favorite. Oh. <laughs> okay, get your drink because we're going to have some fun now. Ready? Okay. Because to get to ask. Danielle. We doing shots? What we doing? No. Ah. I mean, that sounds like fun now. I was, I was going to tempt you to see if you would take after, it. After two more solo episodes, absolutely. Hey. Um, no, but to ask you to time travel. You really embrace this course from scratch to since 3000. You're totally embodying this. To me, you're fully embodying this right now. There's a next level after that. I had to... There's a, it's like, you always tell me this, there's a new big boss, right? So like oh, the, yeah. the Mario game, it's like, we get there and we're like, we did it. We went down the tunnel and then out comes this new land. And you're like, wait, the boss is bigger. Like, yeah, wait, I, I was a big boss. And I, I remember for me, it was changing the name of my show. Mm -hmm. So like four and a half years, I was the stranded phase. And to be crying in a hotel room in Miami on the balcony and being like, why do I feel so unaligned? To get to the moment of like, wait, I'm marrying this story. Like I'm marrying, I'm literally marrying the idea of being stuck when I'm literally not anymore, other than in my mind. Wow. So like I'm embracing these stories to feed an audience that I fed when I was stuck. Well, I'm not stuck anymore, but I'm keeping this story in my head. So what does the new me look like? And that was embracing rich in real life. Mm. Um, <laughs> Come on, rich in real life. Y'all better follow and subscribe. <laughs> Better get these gems from Jess. It was, but rich in real life, like being rich in everything. It was community, connection, that. spirituality. Going from the stranded phase to rich in real life. Yes. Ooh, I love it. Because that was my birthday theme. And you inspired oh, that. No way. You inspired that. When you talked about the birthday party, when you told me that story about your freaking birthday and that Helen threw you this party yes. and it was themed, I literally called my girlfriend the next night and I was like, okay. Listen to this story. Uh, and I was like, and I was having my 33rd birthday and I had just went through my most, most transformative year ever in my life. Like my dark night of the soul, like mm. crying in a bathtub, all the things. And I was like, okay, I'm coming out of that now. And I want my birthday to reflect like my new year. I want mm. my birthday to be my new year. And I was like, what? And she was like, okay, well, what is the phrase? And it just came so fast, like rich in real life. Because there's all these influencers and gurus and the flashiness, all the things that brought me joy and got me out of a dark place were sisterhood. It was connection. It was being rich in spirituality. It was being rich in faith. It was being rich in um, just like fun and mm, finding mm. things that brought me joy and just like, and then when you are in that state, in that spirit, the money comes. Oh yeah. So it's like, then you get to be rich. So congrats. Mm. Like being rich. It's in already life. there. It was waiting for you to open your arms and catch it. Exactly. It's like being in the money machine, you know, when it flies up all the money. I mean, literally like that's what we're living in moment to moment and we don't realize it. Like we are in the money machine at every moment. There is money flying around. Everywhere. It's energy. energy. And all we got to do is get in there and catch it. Grab, Grab it. it. Grab it. Mm. <laughs> so what is 10 years from now for Danielle? Like, what does that look like? Time travel. Where are you? What are you doing? Mm. Are you married? Do you have babies? Mm. Definitely all of those things. So I recently went to celebrate my sister's birthday. Mm -hmm. um, our friend Amira threw like a celebration for her at the Museum of Ice Cream. And it was there so was. Cute, by the way. Oh, it was thanks. so cute. Yeah. We, girl, we got in the ball pit and we took the little photos with our glasses on. It was fun. And there in the Museum of Ice Cream, there's like a prompt, like a wall of prompts. And the prompt said, uh, what is your biggest dream for this year? 
And so Amira's like, why don't you go first? And I said, it's to be engaged. And she was like, oh, wait, what? And I think Surprise. she was expecting a business goal and all of that. And I said, you know, I know that the business goals are gonna happen. I know all of those things are gonna happen. The demonstration of my biggest personal growth will be me attracting, connecting, and solidifying a relationship with a person because that will mean that I have truly gotten out of my own way. Mm. Because something I realized recently is I do struggle to receive love. I'm the first to put me like, uh-uh, six feet and not even know I'm doing it by being like, no, 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 like I'll see you in like a week. No, 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 um, I don't want you to be here for that. Oh, sorry, can you leave in 10 minutes? I got this thing to do. I'm feeling a little stressed about my work. Can you go? Instead of being like, how can I partner with this person to you know, help me create this thing? So for me, that realization was, okay, if I am with someone and engaged, that means I have truly gotten out of my own way and I'm able to receive, like that filter, and it's open and I'm able to receive. And also I have released this glamorization, right? So I, when I realized is I have a measuring stick in relationships. So in a, a love relationship with a potential life partner, I do glamorize it and I expect that we will never have a disagreement. Um, anything that I, that, you know, doesn't vibe with me, it's unchangeable. You're not gonna be okay, able to Disney. change it. <laughs> it's like a whole Disney movie. <laughs> Is it? What do you mean? Like the, you know how the men always say that like, oh, you have a Disney fairy tale love story. Yeah. And like, cause Disney only shows us like when they choose each other and they get married. Oh yes. And then it's like, we're oh, going to be in love forever. Without realizing it. That's yeah. what I had. Yeah. Right. Cause I'm an eternal optimist. So I'm like, of course it's going to be amazing. Yes. Without me realizing, no, no, no. Like you will have disagreements mm -hmm. and you will have difficult conversations. And I grew up not having difficult conversations. There was no like, confronting conversations. So now those feel very uncomfortable. And I just, I just, when I see something that doesn't vibe, I'm like, let me go over here. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, you can't change it. Let me go over Perfect. here. So now I've learned the practice of, okay, let's have a conversation. Oh, oh, you are willing to change those things, which is so weird coming from me. Cause I'm, I am a growth mindset type of person. I'm constantly improving and I attract others who are constantly improving and who value self-awareness. So where, why on earth didn't I believe that this person could make a commitment to say, oh, I can create the possibility of showing up in this way instead of that way for that to happen. Even, you know, in the next year would be huge. So when we fast forward, we time travel, you know, she already living 10 years from now, Danny's already living. So yes, she has an amazing husband who is self-aware. We have conversations for like four hours, lose track of time. We're like somewhere else. We laugh all the time. It's like intellectual conversations. We vibe, we connect. I am his muse, certainly. Mm -hmm. Every day I walk in, he sees me. He's like, it's like the first time he's seeing me. He's like, wow, wait, let me take this in. Your pants, oh my God, this brace, you just, like that every moment, every day that's happening. We have kids, so two to, probably two, let me know, two. Um, and what, oh, and the kids are awesome. They're so, awesome. because they're their own beings. And I'm like, oh, what are you here to teach me? I get to be yes. a student again. I want to be a, let me sit in the student seat. They're creating their own worlds. They're inspiring me. I'm fully in play. Um, so we probably have homes in different parts of the world, maybe. So I love London um, for maybe like four months of the year, you know what I'm saying? Like a, like a spring summer situation. So potentially spending some time there. Love New York, so definitely have a main home here. Um, most likely with a lot of greenery and um, some version of homeschooling with the kids potentially, unless we can find a school that really like aligns with our values. Um, I've always had this, this vision of like my friends also teaching my kids. So we do a summer camp or we do like a quarterly camp where all of my amazing friends, you gonna be there, you there right now. I'm in. Okay, y'all Y'all are there too. My son's and grown, he'll babysit. Oh yeah, I love it. That's he's, right. He's old enough to babysit at this Okay, point. get him a job. Yeah, he's babysitting. <laughs> we're, and we're paying top dollar. Yes. You watch these babies. You know what I'm saying? So we're doing a summer camp and you're helping them. You're interviewing them on the podcast. You're helping oh. them create their own show. Helen is leading them in like a visualization exercise. Like, what do you want to release that in this moment? So what do you envision? <laughs> right? 
Dallin is there and he's showing them how to actually like they shoot, can produce their film, own produce show. Produce their own show. And so some this of the kids good. are producing while some of them are learning from you and being on the podcast. Sean is there teaching them how to tell, tell stories. stories. Oh. Robert is there and he's showing them how to perform and show up and, and maybe produce their own kind of TV show. We've got all the friends there. They doing all the things. Tara is teaching them how to build an app and also teaching them how to dance and be fully self-expressed through dance. That is what I see for my kids, whether it's quarterly, but some kind of learning experience that is really pulling in my community. Cause that's where we came from was communal living. And yes. then we isolated ourselves and we're like, oh, let's let's live in this box with only the two of us and try to struggle and make it work and force our parents to move or invite them to move to where we are to help out. Like, nope, taking it back to the community and realizing that friends are family. Um, so bringing them in. By then I have, you know, books out. I have shared a lot of like my mindset, my quotes. I've done a lot of writing. I write almost every morning. I wake up and I do my morning pages. I'm still doing a show in some former fashion. Like perhaps I do a tour and I go to these different locations so we can world school the kids they can see these different places and while I'm there I interview really interesting people I might be studying something in particular so one of the things I I like really wanted to do was I was like oh my god it'd be so cool to go back to D school so Stanford has the design school mm -hmm. and learn about design because design is under everything right mm -hmm. yeah. I mean everything like not only furniture but how do we design communities how do we design buildings for maximum um, colliding of different personalities different people um, so maybe I've like gone and studied something one other thing I wanted to to do was like I was like wouldn't it be dope if it was almost like I was like okay if I was a student again and I was in college and I was designing my dissertation what would that look like and if they gave me like a budget for it okay or not I just made it myself because that's what we do the money's everywhere catch it everywhere. okay we got the budget for it. Pull it in so it was a project where I would go to um the schools with the top educational programs and not rated by like a weird metric stick but actually like qualitative education like mm. out of the box like learning the mindfulness meditation the coding because it's not about learning the coding it's about learning the mindset that it's okay to fail if you think about coding, you put in some things and then you click refresh and then you open up the page and see what it looks like. And if you didn't quite get it, you're like, okay, let me go back and let me just change this character and refresh it. And I learned that in my web design class in college. And I'm like, oh, this is a great practice in just like, taking risks and failing and knowing it's okay. You can iterate as you go along. And then having that logical thinking that if this, then that reasoning, okay, if I do this, then this will happen. So, you know, like studying the schools that are doing that, interviewing the principals, interviewing the top uh, curriculum designers in those programs and finding out and, and going and being on the campus and being like, ooh, the design of the campus is so that the playground is in the center of the campus. So when they walk to their classroom, they need to walk through the playground so they have a sense of play and there are things they can interact with so they can be in motion and be in their body and you know collide with a friend and do a quick dance or there's a dance session. I was like, that'd be super dope to just study and interview these people and figure out okay what is leading education look like what does what are the new you know edges of that so perhaps I'm doing something like that and my show is showcasing that where I get to interview them and you know perhaps it's on Netflix or it's on Discovery or or oh shout out to Robert because you already had your show you go you go just slide me right in there you phone me uh, <laughs> Jasmine too with your children's show oh that's another thing my kids are being also raised through my friends and the things my friends have created because Jasmine's children's show is gonna help raise my kids that's going to be the new you know blues clues Gullah Gullah island whatever fill in the blank kids show sesame street mr rogers and they get to see a woman who looks like their mom teaching them these practices that we didn't learn so my kids are actually are yeah going to be raised by my friends and the people i've even had on since 3000 on this show um i see all of that and more you painted this vision for me and I saw so many things. I saw like, when you said this, I was like, okay, we're doing a pod, you'll have a podcast room. So just like the sex room, you'll have a podcast room. Oh, yeah. This so is 3000 Studios. This oh. is 3000 oh, Studios. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And then like Robert talked about with a sanctuary. Oh, and the sex room too. Sorry. So we have both. They're sex not the room, same. podcast they're, room, they're, they're not, not the same. same. No, they're not. Because that's, a, that's, a, that's not an easy tra <laughs> transition. So <laughs> those toys and tools are different. Uh, <laughs> So you have the sex room and the podcast room. You have your Sensory Thousand Studios where you can produce, uh, help other people produce exactly. their content as well. Exactly. Because now you've literally created, this sounded like a university because you surround yourself with people that constantly inspire you. So you have everyone readily available around you that like, you're like, they could inspire it. Not only do they inspire me, but they could inspire my children. They could continuously inspire my life. And I can surround myself with this on the constant in my sanctuary. Mm. I was like, oh my God, I can see 
all of this. And then one of my favorite things about some of the most popular podcasts is when they don't try to be someone else, when they say, here's where I'm at and here's the journey I'm going to take you on. And if you intend on going through these seasons with me, you'll grow with me. And so taking them from where you are now at the beginning of Sensory Thousand to saying, okay, by in 10 years, we'll have Sensory Thousand, but I'll be you'll be 10 years forward with me where I'm interviewing people about the design and the art and the, the way in which they create things on a whole nother level, because that's where I'll be in my own personal life. Mm. People love to trek that journey with you. Mm. So I saw a lot for you. Thank you for asking me that question. You're welcome. I love it. I've never- You like, asked all your guests. You know? Wow. So I had to ask I you. I didn't know that was inside. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You need to be asked so you can reveal. So you can bring so thank it you up. for giving me this. Space you get inspired by everyone else's future, mm-hmm. and that's where you live. So I was like, I I gotta see this. <laughs> I have to see this. <laughs> and so before we get into tell the truth, I have to just take a moment to give you your flowers. And you have inspired me so much from afar, but just uh, doing life with you in the last eight. It's been about a year. Uh, don't 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 be telling on don't be telling on me now. You know, for the for the short time that we've worked together, um, I have to give you your flowers for a couple things that you just really put into perspective for me on another level. Uh, one, you broke the ceiling, so ceiling is completely different. In your mind, it doesn't exist. In my mind, it was on my forehead, and I needed it to get out of the way. And so, watching in the way in which you operate really broke the ceiling for me. Two, um, you took. I read, I read The Power of Proximity in every book that I ever embraced. But to see the way in which you do it, you took that shit to another level. Mm-hmm. And it made me take it to another level because you don't even realize that you are so committed to, I don't know that it's being inspired or what it is, but you make sure that your team, everyone on your team is really bringing something to you that they elevated a level that which you aspire to to be at. Yes. Your team, your friends, the the people and the influencers that you associate yourself with. You take power of proximity to the next level. Because to me, when I would read power, power of Proximity, I'd be like, oh, go to conferences and pay for masterminds. Got it. Like just force yourself to be in rooms that you're uncomfortable in. But you make your life by design inspiring, which is like you make sure your proximity is always in the future. Mm. So that was, I have to give you your flowers for that. Nice. Three, this is a big one is I would hit barriers or walls or self-sabotage so often that I would think, okay, every successful female CEO I see um, just has this state that she's in or this way that she shows up or this way in which she operates. So I need to, the woman I I was idolizing, I'm like, I need to become that. That's my block. And being around you and seeing that not only is your brand you totally being, but you stay feminine and soft. And that was so inspiring for me because I was like, and I I say this in a way, but I was like, I don't have to be this bad bitch to be like, I mean, I'm gonna be a bad bitch. Okay, I'm gonna be a bad bitch. I'm gonna be a bad bitch, bitch, but, (laughs) but like, I don't have to be this assertive, aggressive, demanding woman to stand out in my space. I can just be more of me and allow the people to come. And you being fully you and being feminine and soft, but just fully expressed while doing it made me like, oh, I don't have to change. I just have to be more of who I am. Yes. More of who I am and then allow myself that space. And I think the fourth, there's so many things I could go on for hours, but the fourth thing I have to give you flowers for is just, you are wildly successful. Like you are my measuring six, you are my measuring stick for success. Mm. And so knowing all the success that you've had, and still seeing how you love people and how you show up for people. I hate using the word humble, but you just, you love on a different level. The way you allow people in your space, like, you know, you said all these coaches are like, you know, um, outsource, outsource, outsource. Like I had coaches like, don't ever let people in your car. Don't ever let people in your home when you do this, when you do that. And like, you're like, no, come in my house. Like, let's go to dinner. Like all these things that I saw you do with your clients and your students. And I was like, you literally just, trash all the stereotypes in the best way where you're like no no i'm gonna do this this way and i was like okay i do get to do business the way that i feel the best doing it or else why the hell am i doing it like you inspired in in less than a year 
I have to give you your flowers for those things because you changed the way that I did business and the way I showed up personally in a lot of ways. So, oh, thank you. and I can only imagine what you've done for a lot of your listeners. Oh, wow. So thank I hope you, you receive that. I hope you receive that. I do. All the way. Um, you make it very easy to receive it. Oh, you good. really do. Yeah. You I like create that. a safe, uh, a safe space for people to receive it and to show up in that like receiving energy and hey. you give it so generously and genuinely you make yeah. it easy okay so your inspiration your tattoo is tell the truth which i love because i am the i used to call myself like the queen of vulnerability like i was so inspired by Brene brown like i was like yes. hey this journey might be shit at some time but i'm gonna tell everybody i don't care i'm not gonna sugarcoat anything no. y'all gonna see it I like it is your wife because we go in there you getting the truth like it is what it is no i almost failed today and i cried and it was hard and it's giving fuck this shit. excuse my language <laughs> um so i love that no matter how successful you become tell the truth is at the center of your world so you've asked every single one of your guests. So I insist on asking you, what is your most recent truth? Or what is something that you are working to tell yourself the truth about? I have something coming up for me. It's uh, this breakup letter. Should I share about the breakup letter? Oh, you sipping your tea. Let's go. All That's right. the truth. Let's go. Okay. So I was on a trip and on that trip, it came in and I said, oh no, I'm, you know, I'm dating someone. And I said, we got to break up. It's, it's Get not six feet away things. again. <laughs> exactly. It's not doing the things I needed to do. And so I wrote a letter and it was a breakup letter. I knew that if I got in person with him and attempted to break up with him that I would either just fall on my face in my delivery. Um, you know, communication on things like that, I'm still honing and exercising, mm -hmm. uh, things that are potentially difficult. Um, so for me, my strength is writing. That's my best way to express my pure raw emotions. So I wrote a letter and, you know, I started out with all the amazing, wonderful things that we've shared, all the amazing things I love about him. And then I moved into, and, you know, we talked about, because we were sitting right here in this living room, and he noticed that we could occupy three different types of relationships. And he's like, I don't know if we could be all three. Maybe we could be two, maybe one. And the it's three rare. types, you know, and the three types of relationships were best friends because we would have a blast. Like Aww. we are twins. I mean, we're so similar. We think similarly. And so we could be best friends. And we're like, really like so honest with each other, share everything. He's like, I usually just share this with my boys. I don't know why I'm telling you. And I was like, you're welcome. Hello. <laughs> so we could be best friends. He's like, the second is we could be business partners. He's so business savvy, like wildly intelligent and an executor, visionary and operator, delegator, just incredible. And or we could be life partners and, you know, we could get married and have a family and live life together. So those were the three. And it was like our, our second or third date. It was our second date. And he shared that. And I was like, OK. And so in the letter, I said, you know, I realized that in this lifetime, we are not meant to be lovers. We are not meant to be life partners. So I want to ask, you know, can we be best friends? Can we be business partners? And I know you don't want to hear this and you're going to be like, hell no. However, I'm going to take us back to our second date and say, you know, can we create this possibility and still love on each other, appreciate each other and be there for each other? So I write this breakup letter and I come back home a few days later and um, we're sitting on the couch and I'm like, I wrote you a letter. And he's like, oh my gosh. And then I was like, I would like you to read it. And he's like, oh, and he's like, oh, this isn't a breakup letter, ha, 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 ha. And I was like, oh, ciao. And I was like, okay. <laughs> he starts reading it and he's like, okay, okay. It's a breakup letter. And so he says, are you open to an exercise? And I was like, nah, I mean, it's, it's not gonna change the outcome. I'm like, no. Nah. He's like, are you open to an exercise? And I was like, okay. And he's like, okay. And then I had my, my like easel and my like little 
white notepad set up in the living room where I do my business doodles. And he's like, can we use that? And he's like, I've never used one of those before. How do we use it? And I'm like, this man, he does the most complicated things and then certain things. He's like, how do we? And I'm like, it's because you're a boss and you operate your whole Can't business time Can't time from, time from you. your phone <laughs> because you're op- like commanding worlds. And so I'm like, just bring it to the couch. We'll do it right here. So he brings the easel right here. We're sitting on the couch and he draws a T on it. And then he puts... Uh, plus and negative, he hands me a green marker, he takes the black marker, and he says, okay, write something you love about us on the left side. And so I wrote down our conversations. They're illuminating, they're inspiring, they're long, they're fun. Uh, And then he writes down uh, laughing. You know, we laugh like 90% of the time that we're together. I feel like I'm a little kid when I'm with you. And then I paused us and I was like, okay, if we keep on this, we are gonna end on the negative note. So maybe we should shift to the negative side and write down what are the, the, the gaps we see in the relationship. So then I write mine down and it's something that, you know, we both shared that we need to work on that I see as an ingrained part of my personality, you know, my personal reality. And so to me, this is like almost like unchangeable. Cause I'm like, I mean, this is, this is me and that's you. And I, we me. can't, we can't change this. We can't fix this. So I was like, boop, boop. There it is. And then he writes one and then I write one. And then he wrote, he's like, I can't think of anything else. And then I'm like, well, I got a few more if you cool with that. And then, you know, and I'm like, okay, cool. And the important thing about this exercise that I learned is it was easy to, sometimes we look at the symptom and we could have written down symptoms when in reality there's a root cause. There's like a root, uh, whether it's a, a way of being Right. Mm-hmm. And so what I, I told him, I was like, let's make sure let's because he I was about to write something. And I was like, oh, hold on. No, that's a symptom. That's that's not the root cause. And it's not about the symptom, because if we don't address the root cause, then it's going to show up in a different yeah. way, in a different yep. symptom. Yeah. So we were really careful about, OK, what are the foundational root causes that might be a part of our personality? Things or that seem unchangeable. Reality? Exactly. So did that. And then this side, the plus side was way long. OK. And so we sat there. He's like, OK, let's take a look at this. And he's like, all these things, I'm going to change them. And he's like, and and I'm not changing them for you. I'm changing them for me because actually you're the first woman who has called me out on this. Like you're the first woman who has said, yes, you're ambitious. And also I noticed that you can be dissatisfied that you're not there yet and project that pressure onto others. Other women have, you know, glorified me for my ambition and didn't realize like there's also this dissatisfaction that was coming with it. So I want to change that. Thank you for calling that out. And whether we're together or not, I'm going to change that anyway, because that's in service of my highest self. And what I found was the things we wrote down on the quote unquote negative side were things that were really in service of us as individuals in becoming our highest selves. It wasn't me Not you choking on your letter. (laughs) Right? Right? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Got it. (laughs) Exactly. So he committed. He's like, I commit. Consider it done. It's it's already transformed. And I was like, are you? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm willing to, to change this one, sort of. But yeah, I can. And I was like, but yes, I commit to this one. And that was it. And he's like, okay, can we create? So we did break up. That's the catch. We broke That's up with that wondering. version of our relationship. Oh, to he said, a new one. your breakup letter was perfect. We broke up with that version of us. And now we're inviting in and we are welcoming the new version of us in this new relationship that we're creating. So what I realized is there is this belief I had that if it feels difficult, I will not have the conversation about it and instead I will run away. And I have met someone and been in spaces with someone who is not afraid of that. And he's like, let's talk about it. Put it, lay it out, put it out on the table. Let's talk about it. Let's excavate it. And I will be self-aware and I'll name it and then I'll work on improving it. And he invites me to do the same, holds me accountable and says, is this in service of your higher self? What does that look like? So I'm like, okay. So that is a recent truth that has been huge. You spoke earlier in the episode about really having to strengthen the muscle of listening to your inner voice instead of listening to someone else's. That's similar to me of like, I've always had to ask myself like, is this God or is this my ego? How did you know in that moment that that wasn't, cause sometimes we'll get in like, we'll start, we'll start protecting ourselves of like, I'm not trying to hear your opinion because I'm married to mine. How did you know that this was, you were accepting 
feedback and criticism with still honoring your inner voice? It was a simple question. Is this in service of my highest self? Is this helping me be fully self-expressed? The answer was yes. And that's all you want at your core of life. Mm -hmm. Everything else that's attracted because of that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm, this was so good. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your truth oh, and your time Thank travel. Thank you for asking. Thank you for letting me be in the interview seat. Uh, this was fun. Thank you for letting me be in the interviewee seat. <laughs> You're welcome. So where can your lovely guest learn more about you and find you right now? Where can they? I'm glad you asked. Because I'm stalking Cause too. So where guest. are you? <laughs> you can find me at since3000.com, right here, where you are listening to this and or watching it, and on Instagram, at Danielle Leslie, or at since3000.co. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, sometimes life be lifing, and we do not know what's coming down that road next. Well, that's what happened to me in 2016 when I was unexpectedly laid off from my job. And I was six figures in student loan debt. I had no savings and I didn't know what was going to happen next. Now, luckily, I had this little voice inside of me at that time that I couldn't ignore. And it was telling me to take the leap. It was saying, use this as your opportunity to build your business. Use this as your opportunity to create your dream life. And so I believe that life happens for us, not to us. And that nudge in my spirit, I should listen to it. Luckily, I did. Fast forward to today, I have a business that's made over $20 million and I've helped over 10,000 people create their online businesses and their dream lives. So do you want to learn how to turn your story into an online product and launch in 30 days? Head on over to coursefromscratch.com forward slash since 3000. I want you to join us on this journey so you can listen to that little voice inside of you too. So go now, do yourself a favor, coursefromscratch.com forward slash since 3000.